So I'm going to use these numbers to show how changes in the dollar peso exchange rate can be expressed as dollars versus peso as well as pesos versus dollar. And I'm also going to show how that affects the price of goods for foreigners buying the other country's goods. And so what I'm going to use is this formula saying that you can convert the Mexican price into dollars using the exchange rate. If you take 10 pesos and turn it into one dollar, for example, you're using that exchange rate. Or you could take ten dollars and turn it into 140 pesos if you take the other exchange rate. You know, one's a reciprocal and one's not. So, you, so one is from the peso point of view and one is from the dollar point of view. But either way, you can turn the Mexican price into a dollar price or a dollar price into a peso price using the same exchange rate. And so, I've got a range of exchange rates, and I've got the reciprocal, which is simply one over the dollar value to get the peso value and then what I do is I take a hundred dollars and I say well what would happen if a Mexican buyer were to buy an American good that's priced as a hundred dollars now that doesn't change American buyers can just pay a hundred no matter what because they're not exchanging currency but anytime a Mexican purchaser wants a hundred dollars they have to buy their currency through a bank or through the financial system at a fluctuating rate and how many dollars they get for their peso uh, deposit depends on the exchange rate that's determined by market forces. So they, they could take a set number of pesos, but they get a different amount of dollars. Or you could say, well, how many pesos do I need given different exchange rates for, uh, in order to reach $100, right? So uh, the exchange rate determines how expensive it is to get $100. Now this is from the, the peso point of view. Uh, to get 100, to get 1,400 Mexican pesos, it takes a different amount of dollars depending. So, so again, the price taken in Mexico says 1,400 pesos. How many dollars it requires to reach that depends on the exchange rate. And so that's going to be a varying number. Right? And so it also shows that products get more expensive as the currency value changes, and that's going to affect trade, in other words, exports and imports. And so I've got a fairly reasonable range for the dollar peso. So this is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20 pesos per dollar. If you take the reciprocal, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.0833, and so forth until we get to 1 20th. Right? And so as the, the this rises, this falls. Right? Then what I do is I use this formula and say, well, in order to get $100, I simply multiply. I take $100 times here, and then I turn $100 into 1,200, 1,400, 1,600 pesos. At the same time, I can take this and multiply, and I wind up turning fourteen hundred, pay, um, turning hundred forty dollars into fourteen hundred pesos at these different rates. And so, here, if I divide one hundred forty by point one, I get fourteen hundred. Or if I divide one hundred sixteen point six two by this number, I get fourteen hundred. Right? So it's all the same numbers. It's just simply upside down, and that's really important to grasp. So first of all, if you go this way, you can see that one dollar is appreciating. If we go down the column, the dollar is gaining in value. Uh, and so the one dollar is buying more and more pesos. But at the same time, we could say that the peso is depreciating. So, and you can see here that one peso is losing value. Again, as the number grows, its reciprocal must shrink and vice versa. So this direction down is a dollar appreciation and the peso depreciating. Also, if we go this direction, the dollar is depreciating and the peso is appreciating. All right, so again, they go in opposite directions because they're, they're simply the inverse of each other. All right, so if we go up, one peso is rising in value. If we go down, one dollar is rising in value. All right, now this is important. We're using this equation. We're just converting at the exchange rate that's given. But if you look here, as the dollar appreciates, a hundred dollars gains value. This is, this is the product here that shows what is $100 worth. And $100 is going to gain value as $1 gains value. But if you look at it from the Mexican point of view, as the peso depreciates, the peso cost of $100 goes up. In other words, this could be a Mexican import or a US export. And so as the peso depreciates, the Mexican imports become more expensive. Or you could look at it the other way and say, as the dollar appreciates, U.S. exports become more expensive. So what does this mean? That means that the exchange rate changes the price of traded goods. The appreciating currency finds that it is harder to export. So if the U.S. dollar appreciates, our exports become more expensive. 
You can look at it from the other point of view and say, as the peso depreciates, its imports become more expensive. Long story short, an appreciating currency will export less and a depreciating currency will import less. All right, we can look at it with these numbers as well. As the dollar appreciates, we find that the Mexican product becomes cheaper. And so the appreciating currency will import, well, will import more. So as the dollar appreciates, we buy more products from Mexico. But at the same time, as the peso depreciates, then we would see that, that they're going to sell more. All right, so if a currency depreciates, U.S. exports goes up. If, but also U.S. imports go down. So a weakening currency makes you export more and import less. That makes X minus M, the trade balance from both parts will increase. So a depreciating currency will increase your trade balance and help your economy grow. And so many countries use weak currencies just to do this. If the dollar appreciates, it's the opposite. U.S. imports go up and exports go down. And the trade balance of the current account we'll see that that will decline. So for any country, a weakening currency hurts, or actually hurts imports and helps exports. A weakening currency helps the trade balance. A strengthening currency hurts the trade balance. So a lot of times politicians and other people want a strong dollar or a strong currency. That's good if, if it's a symbol of confidence in the country, but specifically to create jobs, a weak currency might do that. And you see that, that a weakening dollar makes our products cheaper for Mexican buyers, or a weakening peso will make Mexican products cheaper for U.S. buyers. All right, so these numbers show a couple of things. First of all, it shows the appreciating dollar is a depreciating peso. You can show it from both points of view, and it's the same numbers, but you can see it going down in this direction and up over here. We can convert peso prices into dollar prices, or dollar prices into peso prices. All right. And sometimes you can actually say that the, the exchange rate should be the ratio of both. You can actually solve for E and say that the equilibrium exchange rate is exactly where they're equal. All right. so, but we're able to show depreciation, depreciation, and then the effect on the price of goods. All right. The last thing I'm going to do is say, well, what if we have a market for dollars? And say, well, Mexicans are going to buy American dollars to buy American products, or Americans are going to buy Mexican products. So. It's going to be an, an international exchange of currencies specifically to buy these products. Okay, it could be individuals, but usually it's corporations or large businesses buying large amounts of currency. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, as your currency rises, it's going to have supply and demand. All right, so watch this. If the dollar is strengthening, Americans are going to want to buy foreign products. We're going to enter the foreign market. So, a strengthening dollar means that we're going to find cheaper Mexican products, we're going to want to buy more Mexican products. We're going to buy more pesos. And how do we get pesos? By supplying dollars. So a strengthening dollar means Americans go out into the world with their dollars to buy foreign products. And so a strengthening dollar means more supply of dollars as American buyers and corporations and other people want to use strong dollars to buy foreign products. All right. Now at the same time, if you turn it upside down, you can say, well, Another country, if you go down, it's a strengthening foreign currency. So as the peso strengthens, they're going to want to come to America and buy American products. And so they're going to demand dollars so they can buy those cheaper American goods. So now we have a supply curve and a demand curve that look like regular supply and demand. Just like any price, this is the strength or the price of the dollar. So we can have equilibrium E. This is the equilibrium exchange rate. And so market forces determine the equilibrium exchange rate. Supply, a strong dollar means American supply dollar. A, a strong peso means that Mexicans demand, demand dollars. And so where supply and demand meet, you get a market price. And next we'll look at what can cause shifts in supply and demand and change the exchange rate.